I have played the Once Human beta for a few hours and I have some thoughts and first impressions about it. My name is Tavius and let's get into it. So what is this game? Once Human is an MMORPG open world survival game developed by NetEase and scheduled to release in the third quarter of 2024 on PC as a free to play game with a microtransaction store. The post-apocalyptic creepy setting puts you, a metahuman, into a world that has been ruined by the greed of the rich and powerful. Something called Stardust is the main cause. But how did the Stardust get here? Why is the Stardust turning humans into monsters? And why are metahumans not only immune to the effects of Stardust, but are able to use it to their advantage? Those are all questions I'm definitely excited to get answers for as I play more. The story seems interesting enough to get me to want to explore and discover more of the mysteries in the game. Especially about those butterfly looking things you can carry in your backpack, called deviants. As you start the game, the tutorial has you waking up in a lab right after the character creation screen, which I have to say I was pleasantly surprised with how many different options for customization this character creator has. But back to the tutorial. As you escape the laboratory, the game immediately teaches you that you have to search entire rooms and collect items as you progress. It gives you your backpack that you will eventually use to carry deviants, the paper butterfly looking things, and you also meet some weird looking bird named V, who will become your companion and will serve as a guide to give you tips and information as you progress. Think of it as a ghost in Destiny 2. You immediately learn two abilities, space time and weapon invigoration. Space time allows you to see items and loot boxes around you so you don't miss anything, like the Witcher senses for those who played Witcher 3. Weapon Invigoration is another ability that enhances your weapon in combat for a short time with a cooldown of a few seconds. There are four icons on your screen that you must constantly keep an eye on, on top of your health. The arm icon keeps track of your body. If you break a leg falling from high altitude, you will have to heal before you can run again. Then there's the head icon, which is your sanity, similar to radiation in Fallout 76. This tracks how sane or insane you are. Then there's the water drop, which is your thirst. You will constantly have to drink liquids to keep this up. And if you drink contaminated water, your sanity might be affected. The last one, the stomach of course, is food. Food is essential to keep an even enhanced strength and health for short periods. Later on in the game, you are introduced to cooking, so you can prepare your meals for the day. But most meals spoil in 24 hours, so you can't just make a ton of food and not worry about it again. Unless it is dehydrated food, like fruits or beef jerky maybe? Initially, I thought having to worry about drinking water and eating was going to be annoying, but as I played more of the game, I don't mind it at all and actually learned to like it. I found some blueberry bushes and made me some blueberry juice for the day. Now let's talk about gathering, territory and camps. To set up a camp, you just need some wood and rocks, and once you have this, you'll be able to craft a few items and even make a meal. But the game isn't very clear about where you should place your camp, so hopefully with the final release they add better instructions to set up your camp. Once you craft your pickaxe, it's pretty easy to go around gathering logs and gravel, but as you level up, different types of rock and wood will have you upgrading your pickaxe. So when placing your camp, you need to find an open spot away from other players' camps. And in my experience, that is pretty hard to do with so many players joining this game when I did. It took me a minute, but once I found a spot to place camp, then I was able to place my territory terminal, which marks the area that is yours to build your home base, and no other player can build there. Territory terminals need to be replenished with resources to keep your home base from decaying and eventually disappearing if you leave the game for a certain amount of time. You can also pick up your whole house from the terminal and move it if you found a better spot for your home base. But if building a home base isn't your thing, you don't have to as you will be able to go to friendly towns and use their crafting stations there. In my opinion, the gameplay loop is in a way similar to Fallout 76, The Division 2 and even Destiny 2. You can collect daily bounties from NPCs that will grant you XP and other rewards. There's NPCs with side quests all over. If you have a home, you make sure to deposit enough materials to keep your buildings up and running. When you discover a new town or settlement, you activate a fast traveling tower so you can move faster between towns, since the map seems to be gigantic from what I've seen. There's a desert, forests, swamps, beaches, and even snow I believe. 
so my itch for exploration and discovery will be scratched. The monster designs. This is one of the things that really blew me away. Gigantic spider looking school bus, or some tentacle long legs coming out of a billboard, or an entire house with spider legs. All of them seem to have a weak spot mechanic, but variable attack patterns. Their design team creativity really knocked it out of the park. There's a skill tree where you assign points as you progress and each of those points unlocks furniture or other housing craftables for your home base. There's also fishing in this game, which I haven't had a chance to unlock yet. There's a PvP mode also that apparently has to do with taking over territories and I have not had a chance to check it out, but maybe in a future video. When Once Human is finally released, it is expected to ship with dungeons and raids as the endgame part of the game to complete with your friends. So there would be a ton of content for solo players and also for those who play with friends. The story seems solid so far, and the looter shooter grind has potential to attract many of those Division 2, Warframe, Destiny 2, and Fallout 76 players. From the few hours I've put into this game in beta, and as a Destiny 2 player, I can tell there's something good cooking here, and can't wait to check out the final release. Let me know what you think about this game. My name is Tavius, and if you want to check other cool videos, you can click here.